How do Catholic priests cope with sexual feelings? Before I start this discussion, let me state the obvious. Sex, in its various dimensions, physical, emotional and even spiritual, is a powerful force. It is a gift of God. Everyone, no matter their gender, orientation or marital status, usually has the urge to integrate their sexuality. As Christians, we know that the gift is not to be misused but explored within the confines of marriage. All those who are pursuing chastity or celibacy would therefore understand how difficult it can get fighting off the sexual feelings, most of us fall. It appears that the war against the flesh is the most difficult temptation, and biblical history tells of very great men of faith like David who fell to the flesh. Despite the difficulty however, many people have managed to stand firm and protected their purity. The most notable are Catholic priests. I'm pretty sure that some of you have had questions on how priests manage to remain celibate. Well, I got some answers for you. At this point I know that someone has already dismissed me for noting the Catholic priests for celibacy, because it is no longer secret that priests have illicit affairs out there. The pedophilia cases that have bedeviled the church in the recent past exemplify their immorality. Well, yes, you are right, in fact Richard Sape, a former priest and psychologist, who died in 2018, devoted much of his life to the psychological treatment of priests. He wrote extensively on priestly celibacy. In his 1990 publication, he estimated then that at any given time only 50% of priests, monks and bishops are actually celibate. Given such statistics, 50% of the priests stand exonerated. They hold on to their vows and are indeed celibate. This half is the one from whom we should seek inspiration. I am going to discuss this also as a person who wanted to be a priest. I attended the seminary but dropped out for reasons that I will share in another video. So how do priests cope with sexual feelings? To answer this question, we need to understand that priests are just humans like the rest of us. The first assumption which we correctly made is that they have sexual feelings. One priest had this to say. I think feelings are natural. If I tried to suppress them I'd be storing up trouble for myself in the future. So if I am attracted to a girl, I acknowledge to myself, yes, that is a beautiful girl. The thing that stood by me was, God created it, but you are not allowed to play with it. It's a gift from God, this beautiful person, and I find that gift precious. I'm 45 and I do have sexual longings. What do I do about it? I acknowledge them first of all. I don't pretend they're not there. I don't try and drive them away. I ask what my body is trying to tell me. My body is telling me I'm still a normal male. But there's a message from God as well. As a priest and a celibate some opportunities are cut off, but every path in life opens some road and closes others. I don't have feelings of guilt about my sexual feelings. Sexuality is a gift from God. If we deny it we are denying something that God has given us. But to deny having them is to fool oneself, and that can be dangerous. To be aware of these feelings doesn't mean to act on them. What this priest is saying is that he chooses to view a person as a sacred creature of God. A person should not be viewed as an object for gratifying your sexual desires. No matter how attractive they are, their sacred bodies and your sacred body which are temples built by God himself should always be respected and not given out for defilement. Another priest in an interview with The Age, a Christian blog admitted that he had initially addressed his sexual feelings by actually getting intimate. He rededicated himself to his vows and has been holding fast to his vocation. 
I developed a couple of very good relationships, friendship relationships, so that when I found myself looking for intimacy, I could have that intimacy with a couple of really good friends. I am now 56 and celibacy is not a problem, I can live with it, I have a couple of friends, one male and one female, and I can discuss it with them. This priest shows us that even if we fell, we can still repent and rededicate ourselves to God. The third priest that was interviewed had this to say. Sometimes I have sexual feelings, yes, but not very frequently. I have a low libido which is fortunate. I take this as a grace from God that he has given me this along with the call to priesthood. Some priests express a struggle with it, but they also talk about a positive side which they find worthwhile. The struggle with celibacy never goes away, you get more experienced handling it. His last statement is important to note, he says, the struggle with celibacy never goes away, you get more experienced handling it. This is a statement that I totally resonate with. As a person who chose abstinence till marriage, I've come to learn over the years that each day I have to wake up and rededicate my will to remain pure. There hardly comes a day when I can say that I've now overcome the feelings of my flesh. It even doesn't feel biologically correct. But every day I have to assure myself that God's grace will be sufficient for me and I will finish the day without defiling his temple. Of course I have to pray to overcome temptations, I have to pray that he delivers me from evil but I also have to take practical steps like avoiding movies and writings or pictures that would arouse my feelings. I have to avoid places, people and situations that will put me in jeopardy. This is something that most of us fail to understand. We fall into fornication and adultery traps because we went to the wrong places or kept wrong company. We let our ears listen and our eyes see things that are processed by the mind. These things cling in the depth of our souls and come to haunt us over and over. Manifesting is lust which eventually breeds sexual sin. The Bible encourages us in many verses to flee from sexual sin and to keep ourselves pure. We all know the consequences as outlined in the Bible, it's death. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 9 to 11, or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. This video just like many others which I've made, is to encourage anyone who is living in sexual sin or anyone who is abstaining but they always feel like giving up. That you are not in this space alone. That we have people with experiences like yours but they are not giving up their place of purity and ultimately sainthood. I pray that the good Lord himself sustains you and preserves you in his righteousness. May he guide you by his grace upon a pure path to always flee from sexual sin. What do you think of this subject of celibacy, especially with Catholic priests? If this video inspires you let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe for more insightful videos from us.